We all know flipping houses is a great way to generate lots of capital. But let's be honest, the idea of having to find a good contractor, hire and fire contractors, manage a project, manage contractors, maybe even the thought of doing some of that work ourselves seems quite a bit daunting and overwhelming. What if I told you there was a way you could generate flip profits without having to do a renovation. Well, if that sounds interesting to you, stick around to the end because I'm going to show you exactly how you can flip houses without doing a renovation or doing very little renovation work. What's going on, everybody? Henry Washington here from Bigger Pockets. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, if you like content like this, if you want to see more of it, go ahead and give us a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel, and as always, follow me on Instagram. I'm at the Henry Washington on Instagram. And if you haven't seen our videos yet on how to find good deals, how to identify them, and how to buy good deals, please check out the links in the description to those videos because your ability to do that is going to drastically improve your chances to implement the strategy we're talking about today, which is how to flip a house without having to do any renovations. So you like the idea of flipping houses for the profits, but managing the renovation seems super scary. I get it. I've been there. The two things that cost people the most money is time overruns on renovations and budget overruns on renovations. Those two things really eat into your profits. And if you're new, those two things are bound to happen because you don't quite have the experience yet to budget your time or your money properly. I know on my first flip, my budget for renovation was about $35,000 and we ended up spending close to $55,000. Although we still made a profit, it also took us about six months to do the rehab when we budgeted for three months. So all of those things ended up costing me money in the long run. I still made money, but had I known about this strategy called whole tailing, which we're going to discuss in detail in just a second, that project was actually a great candidate for this method. And I could have made the same profits in a whole lot less time with a whole lot less effort. So stick around to the end and we're going to get into the meat and potatoes right now. All right, y'all. So what is whole tailing? Well, wholetailing gets its name from its sister strategy, wholesaling. And in wholesaling, you control a property by putting it under contract, and then you assign that contract to an end buyer for a fee. So you're technically flipping the contract, but some people see it as flipping houses without doing a renovation. Well, this strategy is very similar, except you're not flipping a contract. You actually buy the property. So that's why it's called a whole tail. You purchase the property and then you don't do any renovation to it. If you, if you can, you just clean it out and then you list it back on the MLS, but at a discount from its original ARV. And that gives somebody the option to buy that property at a discount who wants to put the sweat equity in themselves to then make it worth that ARV amount. And you get to buy it and sell it for a profit without having to do little work. Sound confusing? I get that. So let's walk through a couple of examples to tell you exactly what we mean. All right, y'all. Well, let's go through an example. Now, these are artificial numbers. This is not a real deal. I just want to get you familiar with the concept first, and then we'll go over an example with some real numbers that I actually did. So in a traditional flip, let's say this property that you are flipping has an after repair value of $300,000. So that's what it's worth after it's all fixed up. And let's say you bought that property for $175,000. So you got it at a pretty good discount. The plan is for you to fix it up and then sell it for a profit. So let's say that property needs about a $50,000 renovation. Your holding costs, let's say your timeline is about 90 days. So your holding cost is maybe $3,600. And when you sell it, at the end of your renovation for $300,000, you're gonna have to pay your realtor, you're gonna have to pay closing costs and uh, that is going to run you about 8%, about $24,000. So if you bought it for 175, you sold it for 300 and you subtract your renovations, your holding costs and your fees and commissions, that's going to leave you a net profit of about $47,400. Well, if you did the wholetail strategy, you could still take that same $300,000 ARV property and buy it for 175. So your purchase price doesn't change. But now we're just going to look to sell it for $240,000. So that's 
sixty thousand dollars less than the three hundred thousand dollar after repair value that the property is actually worth. And let's say you only spend about two thousand dollars on your fix ups. And so that money would include small things like sending a cleaner in there to clean it out. It would also include if you need to, you know, put some carpet in a room or put some flooring in a room. The idea is you fix the property up just enough that it will pass a conventional loan inspection. And in order for that to happen, all your appliances need to work, your HVAC needs to work, and your uh, floors need to have some floor covering on them. It doesn't have to be awesome, amazing floors. It just, you can't sell a house with the subfloor showing. Your holding costs in this scenario are a lot less because instead of a 90-day project, you're looking at about a 30-day project. Your fees and commissions are a little lower because you're selling it for less. So you're spending about 19 grand on your fees and commissions. And so when you buy it for 175 and you sell it for 240, subtract your renovations, your holding costs and your commissions and you make about $42,800. Now that's not much different from the 47,400 you make over here and you did a lot less work in a lot shorter time period here. I don't know about you, but the 5k or so difference isn't a big deal to me if I can make this money faster without having to worry about the renovation and the contractor portion. What do you think about this? Does this sound like something that's interesting to you? Have you done something like this before? Let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear your experiences. So let's run through an actual deal that I did. These are real numbers from one of my actual recent deals. So the original plan was to flip this house. We purchased the property for $140,000. The ARV on that property was $275,000. So that's what we felt like it was worth if we fixed it all up and sold it. Looking at the property, it needed about a $65,000 renovation. It was gonna take us 120 days or so, uh, so about a $4,000 in holding costs, and then 8% uh, of fees and commissions would net us about a $44,000 profit, which is a pretty decent deal. But when we looked at it from the wholetale strategy, we changed our plan a little bit. So when thinking through the wholetale strategy, we still bought the property for 140 but instead of selling it for 275 we listed it for $215,000 which is substantially lower than the $275,000 after repair value we spent about $9,000 in renovations and when i say renovations all we really had to do we had to fix a lot of plumbing leaks the reason that we bought this property at such a discount is because it had terrible plumbing issues and the seller did not want to deal with those issues. He just wanted out right then and there. And so we went in and spent about $9,000. We fixed maybe about 12 to 13 different plumbing leaks. One was even under the slab of the garage portion of the house. So it seemed pretty daunting for the seller, but to us, it's more just a number. What's it gonna cost us to get it fixed? We had about $2,000 in holding costs because we held it for about 60 days, and then we paid less fees and commissions than the flip, projections because we sold it for less. So $17,000 in fees and commissions, and we were able to make $47,000. And that's higher than if we did the flip that was going to take more time and more money. We still would have had to fix these plumbing issues in the long in the flip project, but we didn't have to do any of the other work that led up to that $65,000 renovation. And we didn't have to run a big rehab crew. I literally just had to call a plumber. Look at this wholetail strategy as one of your options as you're analyzing deals. It may make sense to do a wholetail, it may not. It depends on your market, it depends on what you buy it for, but the better you buy a deal, the more options you have for disposition. And so because we bought this fairly well, we're able to look at a strategy like this that takes less effort, but can produce the same types of fruit. All right, I know what you're thinking. Henry, it can't be that easy, can it? And just like any other strategy, there's gonna be benefits and there's gonna be risks. So let's jump into what some of those pros and cons are so that you can properly evaluate if this is the right strategy for you. When looking at a whole tale, some of the benefits we talked about are there's little to no renovations and that you get big profits. Well, on the risk side, you're going to have longer time on market typically because you're selling something that's not HGTV pretty. It's older, sometimes dated, and it's going to take a special buyer 
that wants to to buy a property like that. So your buyer's pool is smaller. But on the benefit side, your buyer gets a house with equity. So what does that mean? This market's on fire right now. People are paying over asking price for deals and they're typically getting into properties right now where they have negative equity, right? They're overpaying for properties. Well, in this scenario, you get to offer a home to somebody for less than it's worth. Somebody can buy a home on the market for under retail value using this strategy. That's valuable and it's important because now you're providing a home and you're not pricing out people out of the community and they get to then build their own equity by doing the work that themselves. And so in the house that we did in the example I showed you, it sold to a person who moved in and they're doing the renovations themselves. And so they got to buy a house with equity, even in this hot market. That's super cool. When you look at the negative side, one thing you want to think about is you can't typically sell to an FHA buyer and FHA buyers are a large percentage of the first time home buyer pool. And the reason you can't do that is because FHA won't finance a property if the owner has owned that property for less than 90 days. And typically when you're doing a wholesale strategy, it's a quick turnaround. And so you won't have owned it for that 90 day period. And so these are some things to think about. They haven't really gotten in my way yet. We did have a couple of issues with a, a, a property I wanted to sell to an FHA buyer and they couldn't get it financed because I hadn't owned it 90 days. And we did an exception for them where uh, they put a down payment down and we waited until the term was up and that FHA would finance it. So there's some ways you can get around that if you're creative and if your real estate agent is creative. But at the end of the day, make sure you consider all the pros and all the cons and then run the numbers and determine, is this a viable strategy for you in your market? And there you have it, folks. Now you learned a new way for you to potentially flip a property without having to do a renovation and make very similar profits, sometimes even higher profits than if you do a full renovation. So we talked about the strategy called wholetailing. We talked about what it takes to do a wholetail. We talked about the pros and cons of that method so that you can properly evaluate and determine, is it a viable strategy for you? Keep in mind, the one thing you're going to need in order for this strategy to be of benefit to you is you need to buy a good deal. You need to buy a really good deal. And so if you're still hung up on how to go out and find those good deals under market value, please check out the links in the description to some previous videos I did on how to to determine what a good deal is and then how to go out and find those good deals. If you master those strategies, then you can use exit strategies like this that don't take a ton of time for you to make good profits. So thank you so much for joining us. As always, if you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed this content, give us a like and a subscribe. And also give me a follow on Instagram. I'm at the Henry Washington on Instagram. Thank you so much, family. We'll see you at the closing table. Bye.